What's up, everybody? My name's Russ with rwgresearch.com. Say hello, Richard. Hello. Richard's here. He came for a visit. I'm so happy he came. Uh, working on the cheese, uh, cheesy fan. It's actually, it's going to be a generator is the goal, of course, so we're going to try to make it that. Apparently they're outside. The kids are yelling on the trampoline. They got a trampoline for Christmas, so just ignore that. I'll try to yell over it. Anyway, this video is basically the continuation of the search for answers. This device was constructed out of all the knowledge that I gained and built from that series of videos, mostly. Um, so I'm going to show you what I did because I forgot to film any of it before I started disassembling the wiring, and I'm going to rewire everything. So let me show you. All right, so without going into some extremity of explanations, which I'm not going to do, um, I'm going to just give you what I'm working through as I work through it, and then we'll talk about it as we go along in these videos. Basically, if you guys saw the big giant uh, 20 filer coil, we took a bunch of measurements on uh, capacitive reactants and inductance reactants, and we calculated out that every time we add a filer uh, into the circuit, we create a situation. So. Um, we create more capacitance in the coil and we create a different self-resonant frequency of the coil. So this is what the coils look like uh, inside this guy right here. There are two coils on each, um, or two wires coming out of each side because there's two coils side by side. There's a filer coil, um, which means, I don't know, what the, what's the word originate from, you know, filer? Is it bi? Is it, is it some other... Filer just means a filament. Oh, well, why would they name it? By filer, what's because it's two filaments side by side. Oh, okay, alright. By means two. Yeah. Yeah, but filer, then filer. then you got like tri filer, I guess, or yeah. quad filer or yeah. by filer is the most common. Alright, anyway, well there's our lesson for the day. Um, two filaments next to each other. Right. Alright, well Richard knows more than me. So anyway, um, so this is two coils next to each other to create a additive capacitance. We want to add capacitance to this circuit. Obviously, this is a Nikola Tesla um, invention, so to speak. He's the one who, I guess, published it. Who knows who did it before? I don't know. Probably just him. But he um, understood that you could connect these wires in a different configurations to basically create higher capacitance within the coil or create uh, a canceling inductance that was more of a uh, pure resistance by opposing the coils. And what we've done, uh, or what, what I've done here in this uh, particular uh, configuration, let me get my uh, notebook. There you go. I've connected the coils uh, in this fashion. Okay, so on the boards right here, we've got one, two, three, and four. Um, this is one through 25, and over here is uh, 26 through 50. There's 50 coils on here. And so this is the start and the finish of the first coil on the first uh, set and the next coil here. So first coil, second coil, in the order of these uh, connections here. And then uh, they use all the jumpers, of course, to connect them elsewhere. But what we've done for the first test for the motor uh, fan, cheesy fan motor that I built for the competition, I just connected them all in series. So number one coil has two windings and I just went out of this, the first winding into the second winding and then continued down the uh, down the way there and second coil, third coil, fourth coil all the way to 50 and that's the way we configured it. However, by filer coils have two wires in parallel. What I wanted to do is make a three-dimensional filer system. So what I'm trying to do is if I took um, two wires like this and set them on top of each other and connected them in the same polarity, then this would be the same polarity as this, or, or the same, um, I guess the second path around, Not they're all the same polarity right now, but the second path around, um, they'd be the same. But if I flip that, right, if I, if I have multiple windings and I'm offset that, now I've had, I have a difference in potential of voltage between these even greater and different than if they were just on top of each other. I call that a three-dimensional uh, filer style configuration. Okay, so that's like this. So I'm basically just reconfiguring these to gain uh, gain access to basically opposing or, or difference in potential of even greater difference in potential uh, across these windings, if my thinking is true to that statement. Uh, so, real quickly, the data from the original test, the first test is here. 10 uh, 
Let's see, 100 hertz, 120, 1K, 10K, and 100K. These are all the, the measurements that I've gained. I've locked the uh, rotor in the vertical position here and uh, been able to um, get this type of measurement. Now let me bring you over to the analyzer and give you the data that the analyzer gave us, or at least what I have pulled up currently. Now before we do that, uh, I wanted to explain one more thing. So by adding a, uh, a greater difference in the wire, uh, we should see either the capacitance go up or the capacitive reactants uh, go up a little bit every time we add that. So the first test here was just all back to back, looped back through each coil all in a layer. And then um, now we're doing a three dimensional filer where we're actually just flipping that one and so hopefully that gains us a little bit. Won't be much, but it'll be a little bit. And then next we're actually going to take uh, the coil from one and run it into like 12 and then back to 2 and then back to 12 and, and get a much much even higher greater difference in potential which is actually the reason that I've created these coils put them in this jig and made everything so precise is because I actually wanted to create this proper three-dimensional filer sort of coil which is it's not easy it could be done a different way but it's not easy to do this was the easiest way that I found out how I wanted to try to do this and test my theory all right, so here's the little doodad I've been using, the analog devices, uh, Evil AD 5933EBZ. Uh, so this is an impedance analyzer, and every time you change all the configuration, we have to obviously reset this and calibrate it to the resistor here, to the end of the leads, and make sure it's all zeroed out. So that's what I'm using to do my analysis, so let me show you the data I acquired. All right, so recording the screen again here, it's probably crappy, but you get what you get. Um, so here we've done a frequency sweep between 500 and, uh, or 5,000 and 7,000 hertz, and we've got this self-resonant frequency of the coil all the way down to about 6,000. Um, we turned the magnet in there, different, um, either up or down or left and right to, to, to see if anything changed here, and it's pretty well the same. The only difference we saw was the curve was a little bit different. So the magnet uh, interferes very tiny with the um, with the result here. And then here is the uh, phase angle. So it starts out at about 80, kind of comes down, and then drops past zero into the negatives. So again, the positives here um, are inductive. The second half here is, uh, or the negatives are capacitive. So this is the phase angle between current and voltage at these frequencies. If you don't have a clue what I'm talking about right now, then you need to go back and watch the videos uh, on the 20 filer coil. I'll link it in the description so you can understand all the data and kind of reasons why I'm doing this. Go back through the search for answers videos and look at all those videos so you can understand why I built this particular device. All right, so I think I'm actually going to wire up this and put this in another video. I'm going to leave this video just like this, short and sweet trying to get you guys introduced to the project. Uh, go back and watch all the search for answer videos if you want to understand the importance of the self-resonant frequency and why I'm doing what I'm doing. And I will describe more in the future about why it is I'm specifically doing exactly this according to an understanding that, uh, that I've been uh, trying to build in my own viewpoint for a while now. And I understand it to a point where I've designed this because I think it's a good way to demonstrate the principle with uh, a complex system that's actually pretty simple at its heart but it is complex to build so to speak so if you can figure out another way to do it great but for me I wanted to build up very high capacitance in the coils because that's what these big ginormous coils right here right these big giant coils the one that uh, that Richard built here and the other one that we tested over there you know these big giant coils gave us these super low self-resonant frequencies this big coil here is 120 Hertz right now with this configuration I am actually at 6000 and the original single coil which I uh, need to remeasure right now is really really high it's up uh, I think it was like 250 kilohertz so we dropped it from extremely high down all the way to 6000 but I need to go even lower because I want to get the rotational speed to the same speed as the self-resonant frequency pretty sure that is what Newman was doing without really fully understanding all the concepts of how he was making things happen but from the descriptions and all the data that we can find it seems like that's pretty too uh, true 
And uh, Dr. Roger Hastings even goes into explaining his understanding about the motors running at their self-resonant frequency. So um, me and Richard, uh, about six months ago, did some tests on the big coil there, got it to operate above its self-resonant frequency, and um, the result that we were looking for seemed to be positive, and then I shorted it out and we never got the result again. So this is a attempt to basically bring that back without having 150 pounds worth of copper. Instead, we're somewhere around 1.5 to 2 pounds. I gotta calculate that by resistance real quick. So, that's all I got to say for now. Enjoy the kids yelling in the background, they're having fun. And uh, yeah, off to a fun start this year. Hopefully this video series of building and testing and checking this will be helpful. Um, if you haven't seen my last video, I go into all the descriptions of how I built this and how I constructed it. Um, I gave you guys an in-depth video after the cheesy fan motor that I posted. Um, so if you haven't seen that, go watch it so you can get a little more insight on how this was constructed. Okay, see you guys next time. Bye. Say bye, Richard. Bye-bye. <laughs> see you. God bless. Hey, read the Bible more. Later.